Hello YouTubers, Love Scout one again. Uh, this is just a quickie. Um, I did mention in my Dog Soldier Knife Scabbard video the Fulton of an F1 and the custom sheaths that um, Dog Soldier Knives makes for the F1. Um, I've used an F1 for quite a while and um, kind of fell out with it and um, it, for one reason, and I'm 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 not belly aching about the knife. You you all know knife, so there's there's not a right lot of point in me doing a great in depth review about it. Zytel sheath, excellent piece of kit. Mine's got some Ranger bands on it. Um, you know if it gets mudded up and snarled up or covered in, you know bits of evisceration and guts and stuff, you can whack it in the dishwasher. And I have heard that these studs do rot after a while if you keep putting in the dishwasher, so maybe scald out with some hot water or some scalding hot water. Um, nice grip, nice pommel. You've all seen this knife, you all know it's score. Um, I did see a video the other, the other day about a guy in States, and uh, it wasn't a destruction test so much, but he absolutely gave this knife some panel. He absolutely absolutely pasted this knife was sticking that through a four inch log and braying it and bending end over and oh well, it's a really good knife but i've broke it and one thing or another the only thing that i didn't like about the f1 and this is a an observation it's not a criticism that it came with a really poor bevel there now I don't know if you can see mine, I've had mine reground. It did come with quite a steep bevel and then it had like a, a really poor convex edge on. Mine came out of the box, it wasn't sharp at all and um, I've had a DC4 whetstone for quite a while and touched it up and got it sharp, sharp enough to, to growl like a deer with anyway, uh, which is primarily what I bought this for. Now, they say that the Finnish and Swedish um, Air Force use this knife as their survival knife and it's a big, thick, chunky piece of steel and one thing or another. That, that's fine. I know a lot of lads that go out and do Big Five in Africa and, you know, I know a lot of lads that, that, that are big game hunters that would swear by this knife for, for gutting a, a rhino or an elephant or um, you know a cape buffalo or whatever when they don't big five I don't really know a great deal about it but um, would swear by this knife and that's fine in the the thing in the, the the way that it comes from the factory I don't think personally as a survival knife or a bushcraft knife yeah as a as a game processing knife or a knife for gralicking deer it don't work now we mine I don't know if you can see. I've had the bevel ground off, so it's just a, a wedge shape, really. Rather than having a wedge and then coming down to a bevel and then a secondary bevel on that convex edge, then basically all I did was have it ground to a wedge-shaped blade. Now... Um, I sent this out to Longstrider Knives. Now, uh, Longstrider did my Condor Bush Law, which you know I still like, and um, I rang him about this knife when I'd got sort of a bit vexed with it, and he said, "Oh, don't worry, Scout, I've got one of them, and I'll do my magic. I'll work my magic on it." And he did. Um, and again, you know, I'm losing air. I haven't got any air on my hands because I keep shaving it off, but. You can tell how sharp that is, and I mean, I think it was 15 quid to have it resharpened. Again, not not uh, promoting anybody's services, not being uh, sponsored by anybody. Longstride is a great guy. If you want, if you're struggling with knives, or you're struggling to get them sharp, or you just want some advice, the guy will talk to you. He's a deer stalker in his spare time. He knows what he's talking about with his deer. So you know, if you think I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not putting you on the right track, then by all means, talk to him. He's a great guy. Um, but the, the the F1, if you're going to lay out for it as a bushcraft or a survival knife, then it's great. If you're going to lay out what lay out the hundred plus quid are they for a knife for preparing game and preparing you know butchering deer, then I would say it's it is suitable, but it needs some work to make it right. Falkniven. Um, as I was made aware the other day, do a knife very similar to this, but with more of a more of a more of a chunky chunky blade that's a bit more upswept to the front, which is specifically for hunting and for um, you know for 
boning out deer and for doing fish and one thing or another. And I would suggest that would be a better knife. Better knife to for my for my purposes anyway. If I was going to buy another knife, um, I do like the sheath, but they do a dropper sheath for for them. Uh, and I would, if I had the option again, I would have it with the drop the dropper sheath because I think it's a I think it's a nicer thing, and I think you probably get more you know more use out of it. But the F1 as a knife, if you're going to have that, if you're going to have that, and keep it in your bug out bag, in your pack, in your in your waste bag, whatever, as a backup, there's not fine. I don't think, not fine at all. Uh, and like I said, this isn't, it isn't a gripe about it. Yeah, into gripe, I'm just, I'm just, you know, basically giving my observations. You know, if you think I'm wrong, then you know you're entitled to your opinion. But some of the bigger fault niven knives I've seen, especially on some lads like I say that I know that go out and duck big five, and um, you know go out hunting Kate Buffalo with double rifles and one thing or other, we swear by these knives and swear by the big ones as well, and go out with a tool roll, you know, with four or five different knives in and sharpness and one thing or other, and you know I'll I'll drop a Kate Buffalo and take the cape off it and take the head off it and you know prepare the trophy while they're in the field, and. You know, I know some at like porters and stuff. Uh, you know, uh, you know they wanted to swap the wives and camels and bits of Land Cruiser for them because, you know, they struggle to get them sort of in you know out on out on safari like lads that are doing it. And I know another a pal of mine, Mike, who goes out quite a bit shooting Cape Buffalo. Um, he's he swapped two of these for you know watches and you know lumps of gold and precious stones and all sorts uh which maybe you shouldn't have done but you know a trade's a trade at the end of the day and if you're talking to hunters around the fire and oh yeah i want one of them knives like i'll trade you it's one of them isn't it what do you do but yeah i mean if like i say i i i like i like fault niven everything i've uh, seen about them and read about them nobody's really got a bad way to say about them only about the grinding um, I know quite a lot of stalkers in the UK that have this knife and swear by it. It's nice and short. It's nice and light. A lot of weight to it. It's a good piece of kit. If you're gonna, you know, buy a buy a knife solely for that, or you want a knife that does everything, then I don't I don't think you'd go far wrong. So, like I say, it's just my observations. I'm not pulling it to bits at all. I just think if you if you're gonna get one, you know, bear in mind you're gonna you might have to do a bit of work on it to uh, to get it right straight from the factory. Right guys, uh, another another video, I'll whip through them and um, I'm going to talk about guns now for a little bit and um, we'll see where we go from there. Alright fellas, cheers!